Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a third year chemistry student at Imperial College London on an integrated master's course. Today, I will be answering 12 questions about Imperial, which I've been asked the most by all of you online, as well as during UCAS interview days, which I helped out with in the past two years. See the description box below for timestamps if you want to skip anything you're uninterested in. This is the third video I've made answering your questions about Imperial, so if you haven't seen those ones yet, make sure to check them out first. Also, I'm collaborating with Aggie Z on this video, and she'll be answering 12 questions too about our university. I will also link her video in the description box below if you're interested. Without further ado, let's now move on to answering some questions. As someone who's not a morning person, it's honestly been great now that learning has moved online, since I can schedule lectures whenever I want to, and if I have labs one week, I can always watch them before or after that week instead of being forced to attend the lectures during that super busy week. Pre-pandemic, I often had to wake up for 9am lectures, workshops or tutorials on certain days when I had stayed up late either working or, not gonna lie, procrastinating the previous night. However, in terms of labs, it's not been the best. I had one in-person lab in November because the lockdown during then allowed the opening of universities. However, my labs for this term were both online because of the stricter lockdown. Also, we're still paying the same amount of university fees this year for these substitute labs, which honestly isn't great. The answer to that is yes, if the government allows it. So during this particular lockdown in 2021, that's a no. But other than that, we were allocated two weeks of in-person labs in either term one or two, then one week of in-person labs in the other term as third year chemistry students studying for an integrated master's course. If you want to find out more about how my lab went during the lockdown in November, I filmed a vlog which I will link in the cards up here and the description below. So in general, assessments are varied in type. There will be both closed book and open book exams. Open book where you bring your notes with you. We also have vivas where you talk to a lecturer about your project or lab work or a topic and you will have lab reports and individual or group presentations. Some students also produce a poster of their research, that's usually in your final year. There may also be literature research projects, and in one module, students produce an infographic or webinar. Exams are conducted online at the moment, but usually they are set out in halls or large rooms. Students with specific exam requirements may be in smaller rooms, as a group or in a smaller room individually. So I have one friend who's a second year on a four year bachelor course at Edinburgh and one friend who's a first year on a four year integrated master's course at Oxford. So I'm going to compare my experience of studying chemistry in my first year to that of my two friends. Okay, so first off, let's compare our weekly schedule. The friend I'm talking about studies chemistry at Pembroke College at Oxford. So for her, a typical week involves 10 15-minute long lectures, two six-hour labs, one chemistry tutorial, and one to three other tutorials in maths, biochemistry, or physics. At Edinburgh, a typical week for a first year involves three hours of lectures, one hour of either a tutorial or a workshop, three hours of labs, and lastly, two hours of an elective course. 
However, please note that in Scotland, the second year is actually equivalent to England's first year. So it might be better to actually compare his second year schedule. Every week he had five lectures, three hours of workshops or online labs because of the pandemic, and one hour of tutorials. So at Imperial, I would say our weekly schedule isn't as packed as Oxford, but it was certainly more packed than Edinburgh. And also our schedule was a lot more inconsistent. But generally, we had two types of weeks. Lab weeks, which were much more busy, and normal weeks, which were slightly less busy. In a normal week, we would have seven to eight lectures, two to four hours of either a tutorial or a workshop, and two hours of an elective course. During a busier lab week, we would have everything which you would typically have in a normal week, except no tutorials or workshops. And instead, you would have around nine to 12 hours of labs. Now that I've shared our respective weekly schedule as freshers, I'd like to share our thoughts on how manageable we found the workload to be. My friend at Oxford admitted that her workload was extremely challenging to balance because it was not always well spread over the term. However, the content is enjoyable overall. As a first year, my friend at Edinburgh described his experience as incredibly chill. But again, they have a four-year bachelor's degree, so his second year would be more like England's first year. He admitted that his second year was more of a struggle, since there are a lot of things to get done in a week. And at Imperial, honestly, I would agree with my friend at Oxford's description of her first year experience, so I don't think I need to say anything about that. When it comes to independent work, all three universities set lab reports after each lab. And Edinburgh, as well as Oxford, give problem sheets for students to attempt outside of teaching hours. Whilst at Imperial, we're only asked to attempt them during the workshops or tutorials. After that, we can finish them off if we want to, but no one will check if we did do them or not. The chemistry problem sheets at Pembroke College is supposedly meant to take 40 hours to complete, though this is not always a good estimate. For Edinburgh and Imperial, the rest of the independent work time is spent making notes. Whilst at Oxford, they are also expected to teach themselves the lecture material before a tutorial, due to tutorials being scheduled prior to lectures. Well, my favorite thing about Imperial would honestly be the career service. Because of the reputation that Imperial has, a lot of recruiters will come during careers fairs and give talks giving tips for their application process. So if you don't want a career in STEM, there are a lot of other opportunities for you, such as in finance, consulting, or business. Also, almost all of the lecturers are researchers. Therefore, first off, when they teach you, you can tell they're passionate about what they're teaching, which makes you in turn find the lectures more interesting. And also, again, since most of the teaching staff are also research staff, it means there's more opportunity to do a research placement at our university in one of the lecturer's labs over the summer holidays. So obviously with any university, there's good things and bad things. And my least favorite thing about Imperial would be the work-life balance. We have no reading week, and my pre-COVID schedule wasn't that great in my opinion. That's because every week you will have a similar number of teaching hours, even if there are labs happening that week too. So what inevitably happens is that when you have labs, you fall behind. Then you finally catch up when there are no labs, but then you fall behind again when another set of labs occur. Also, the expenses for studying in London is just a bit crazy in general. However, thankfully, as a student, you get a lot of discounts. And if you cook every meal yourself, 
at the end of the day, it's manageable. Oh, and also another thing which I don't like about Imperial is the library. It's almost always completely full after university and during meal times, so I rarely study there. However, thankfully, chemistry has its own study rooms, which no one else can use. So that isn't too big of a problem for students in my department. Another commonly asked question is whether students in first year mix with those in older years. So in short, yes. And in the department, we have this mums and dads scheme organized by the chemistry society, where every first year is paired with parents from the older years. For mixing with senior students in another department, the main way is through societies, since there's a range of year groups who take part in them. Okay, so this question is something that I got asked a lot on Instagram. First off, you got to the offer for this university, and you got the grades required to get in. So clearly, whoever interviewed you, and whoever looked at your application, thought you deserved to be here. The next thing you should think about is trying not to compare yourself with others. In the beginning, you may feel like you don't know anything compared to everyone else. And that you're the only one confused as hell about the content. But when you talk to people about this, you usually realize that other people may be just as clueless as you are. Of course, there will always be people who perform better than you. That's true at university, and will be true when you get a job in the future too. The disparity could be that you're just born like that, but that is very rarely the case. Often, they just work a lot harder behind the scenes, or perhaps they did secondary school exams which covered more chemistry content than you. For example, back in first year, one of my friends was constantly talking about how bad he was at organic chemistry, but everyone around him seemed to be doing just fine. But that wasn't his fault. It was just that the chemistry AP exams didn't cover much organic chemistry. After struggling in the first term, he was perfectly fine because over the course of the first term, lecturers will first teach content from A level again to everyone in order to allow us all to have the same amount of basic knowledge before moving on to more complex theories. Therefore, when you first get to any university, don't worry too much about it if it seems like you don't have as much chemistry knowledge as everyone else. Okay, so one important thing to note is that in the chemistry department at Imperial, we have no reading week. So you see those people taking trips around the UK or Europe midterm pre-COVID? Well, we have labs or workshops or tutorials during that week, so usually we can't go anywhere. Over the Christmas holidays, I usually don't study at all for one week, and then I spend two weeks studying for the exams in January. Then over Easter, I usually spend two to three weeks just chilling, then the rest of it cramming for the summer exams. And then over the summer holidays, I just relax because I really need to turn my brain off for a bit, and I also do an online course or an internship if I get one. So there are three major ones. The first one is Ethos, which is the main exercising facility. And it's located next to the South Kensington campus. You pay £30 per year for the student gym and swim membership. Or if you just want to swim during off-peak hours, then you don't have to pay any money at all. There's also a gym for those living in the first year halls, located in North Acton. That gym is next to the Woodward buildings, which offer a discount for Imperial students. 
back when I was in first year, I heard it cost 40 pounds per year. If you study for an integrated master's in chemistry, then you'll be based at the White City campus for your fourth year. Or if you study for a bachelor degree, you'll be based there too for half of your third year. There is a sports center there with a 30 pound annual fee as well. And the membership is inclusive of gym and group fitness classes. My advice to you would be honestly just relax for the majority of the summer. You've been studying at school for so long and then you're gonna go to university where you'll be studying probably even harder. So you really should take a break while you can. Then maybe a week or two before university, just have a sift through your chemistry and maths notes from school. Maths because there's actually a maths test first week back. At least it existed for when I was in my first year. And for the older years during their freshers week too. But don't worry too much about it because it's multiple choice and you only need to pass it. All it's there for is to see who needs to take supplementary maths lectures and who doesn't. Make notes on the lecture the week of the lecture if you're a note taker. Try not to fall behind and make summaries or cheat sheets after each lecture course is done. This is because exams happen really soon after your lecture courses are done, in January and May or June. And at the end of your third year studying chemistry, you will have three synoptic vivas. These will test your knowledge from the first two years of the course, so it'll make your life a lot easier if you already summarized everything from your first and second year modules. If you'd like to know how I make my cheat sheets, I made a video about this which I'll link in the cards as well as the description box below. I also made a video listing out the things which I wish I knew before starting at university, which I will link in the description box below if you wanted to check that out too. I hope me rambling about my responses to some of your questions has been of some help to you. And if you have any more questions about anything I've said or anything I haven't said, then feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. Again, if you would like to learn more about Imperial, make sure to check out my other informative videos about Imperial or chemistry, as well as Aggie Z's video of her answering 12 questions too. <laughs>